It's resting at 22. Here we go. Those things don't hold. We're in trouble. Thousand pounds coming up. That's it. We're coming. We're coming. There, it's moving. Look. Yeah. And it's just going real slow, real slow. Oh my word. Number one's tightening up. Watch your gauge. We got an oil leak. We got a leak. Shut down. Shut everything down. All right, everybody shut off right now. All jacks, shut off. It is the tallest brick lighthouse in the world. A national landmark lifted up and moved away from the edge. We began at the end, the end of a gravel road, the new site of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'm Bill Leslie. Well, it's an engineering feat covering half a mile, lifting up that enormous light and moving it away from the ocean, some 2,900 feet back from way over there to right here. And at the end of this amazing journey, the Cape Light can begin its new life. So now let's begin at the beginning, not at the end of the road, but along the edge of the sea. Mother Ocean, beautiful sunrise and sunsets, and uh, this, this is the place to be. And we are on the edge of America right here. An old guardian. It's standing on a razor. This is the lighthouse. That is North Carolina. That's part of history. Lighthouse workers like machine gunners, drill bits like bullets, ripping at the base of the beacon. But this is no ordinary adversary. It is a sacred symbol, a national treasure. No, these warriors with their weapons aren't here to harm the light. They're here to save it. Originally, it was all for the dollars. Right now, it's all for the history. It is phenomenal. <laughs> I want to see them move it. I want to see how they're going to do that. That's what's really got my mind right there. I want to see it. They're going to do it. Some 200 feet tall, nearly 5,000 tons. That black and white ribbon recognized around the world. And now, it's as if the ribbon is being unwrapped, wrapping wire around the waist. Iron hole. slicing the light's legs, tearing away the tower's granite base. How's the wire looking, Robert? So far, looking good. So far, so far. Moving the light is a $12 million project. Totally amazing. It really is. Mind-boggling. OK, let's take a tour around here. Don't move the lighthouse. Take the pictures I took. So heavy and tall, the technology to move this tower must be as sound as the structure itself. Nothing. Um, it's saying the A drive is not accessible. Okay, it's up and running now. Steve Campbell, a graphic artist whose laptop is his link to the light, his web to the world. We've gotten hits from Japan, Sweden, Italy, uh, Netherlands, Germany, Chile, lots of different places. Amid all this action sits Steve, staring at a screen and traveling through time. This is the movie that I put together. They dig down to the bottom of the, of the lighthouse, put the lighthouse up on beams, they lift the lighthouse up and roll it down the track. Pretty much just to boil the process down. It's not really a complicated thing. It's a complicated process, but all they want to do is pick it up and move it. It's a process that's kind of difficult to understand all at once. And if you can see it happen in front of your eyes very quickly, then you can understand it a little better. Actually, as big as this project is, and it's big. 
it's not as big as the original construction project. The original construction project where you imagine those big granite boulders being drug over the sand with mules, no electricity, no, no motive power with, with machines. Out here in this sandy area for all these years, enduring all the storms that it's endured, uh, that's part of the amazement to me. Using technology to preserve history is a very good way of putting it, yes. It's just a pleasure to be in this building. This is the most beautiful lighthouse I've ever been in. As I say, we have the opportunity to use state-of-the-art equipment in a building that's 130 years old. It's like looking at the light's vital signs. Oh, everything looks very good. Jerry Stockbridge measures the pulse of his patient. Vibration. And sometimes his own heart skips a beat. Three weeks ago, the computer called me at 4, 4 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Uh, I picked it up and it basically said, uh, the tilt limits have been exceeded, take appropriate action. When I got the first when the phone call in the middle of the night, the first thing was I was worried that something was wrong with one of my kids. Nothing wrong with his kids, just his baby. And I was almost relieved that it wasn't something wrong with one of my kids, you know, almost. But then having a computer tell you that the tilt has been exceeded, you know, was second worst, I guess. It was a false alarm, yeah. All this data flashed before his eyes, wrapped in the palm of his hand. The tilt gauge. Whether or not it's sitting level. The light is level indeed. Six hundredths of a, six one hundredths of a degree. That's nothing. Oh my gosh, they're right. They are gonna move it. They're gonna move it. This to me is phenomenal, it's fabulous. You folks have any questions? We know quite a bit about it. That's good. Been coming down here since the 60s, so yeah. I don't think any of us thought of what a massive job it is. <laughs> you walk I in know. here and say, oh my God, it, it <laughs> look is. at all this equipment. And I think they're well prepared. They, they know what they're doing. By Memorial Day next year, everything should be ready to go. It's 1,500 feet, the new site is 1,500 feet from the ocean again, and that's what this one originally was. And now it's less than 120. If you were on that fence up there, it just drops right down to the ocean. And they put groins out or piers out to try to protect it, and what that's doing is making the erosion come around this way. Brian, what do you think about the lighthouse? What do you think about it? I, it sure is big. It sure is big. How are they going to move that? Can they pick it up? I'm sorry, but it's heavy. It is heavy. It's very big. How are they going to get it down? It's, it's going to be on a roller system. We'll take it four to six weeks to get from here to there. Yes, ma'am. That's how slow. You actually look at it, and you're not going to see it move. That's going to be fascinating. It really is. What I, I tell kids is that we're going to make a platform and build a skateboard. It's going to be a wide, flat skateboard. They're going to lower the skates and push it with hydraulic jacks from behind, five feet at a time. But for fourth graders, that makes it real well, clear. I understand that. For us, myself. too. <laughs> Look at that. They're way up there. Looks like a big old candy cane, doesn't it? Yeah. Only the wrong colors. Yeah. That lighthouse looks like it's going to tip over and go down. Oh, I don't think so. They'll take good care of that lighthouse. It's an old, old one. Very special. Oh, it's not going to crumble. No, no, no. It can't crumble. No, we're not going to allow that. They're so certain it's not going to fall, they're going to let us stand right there at that fence as it goes by. Actually, we're going to put you out there to push it so that it won't go too fast. Is that all right? Not, that'll be good. <laughs> Daddy, yes, that this lighthouse Can you bring is further me to the inland. bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy? All the technology, the technicality, but it really boils down to just four simple steps. Steps one and two, cutting away the granite beneath the beacon and replacing that with a grid of steel. Steps three and four, lifting the light with hydraulic jacks then resting it on rails and moving it. Four simple steps, 
one giant leap. Before the men lift the lighthouse, they must first move this house and this one. It's where the lighthouse keepers lived and the house where their assistants lived too. She weighs right much. Hey! I don't know that we're gonna make the turn. That's it, we gotta go ahead now. One house on the way. Another house to go. Oh! You gonna move it, ain't you? It's a matter of moving the whole site to the new site. So that the new site will look just like the old. Oh. They promised us it'll be an inch, and only an inch and a half difference. Oh my! <laughs> of, of recreating yeah. the, the whole historic site. Yeah, right. What are you stopping for? Hey, give it a little gas. It won't stall out. For the workers, it's a warm-up. Keep their own boards now. This house and the other. You got it. A puzzle with two easy pieces. Hey, moving them first. before attempting the jewel of the jigsaw. Go ahead. She's coming now. Just part of history, but it's fascinating to see it. It's just a hard thing. I think that there's people that have used that beacon all their lives, and now it's changing, you know? It's just a hard thing. I just, I just hope it's a successful move. It is a light that is truly loved, and yet where some see white, others see black. The monument in many ways, a monster, one eye staring from its socket, as if mocking these men. But the men have their own might. They have blinded the beast. The eye is shut, the monster's gut sliced open. But don't be fooled, the beast has not yet breathed its final breath. The eye will open, the light will live again. But what of these men? Will history remember them? This one's the big one. When the history book is written, it probably won't mention the ink all over the hands of the author. In this case, the men who wrote it, the smudges and sweat. History isn't supposed to be messy. In fact, when the book is written, it may skip over the most fascinating part of all, because this is not just the history of the lighthouse. In many ways, the real story is the tale of the men who made it happen. A little tougher than I think we anticipated. Quality, this is just totally built well. It's amazing how well it was built. Especially years ago, they didn't have the equipment we got nowadays. It's built similar to a, to a smokestack, it's a chimney. Yeah! I think it was a little tougher for us because they started from the bottom and worked up and we're taking the bottom out with everything built on top of it. I think that's a little bigger of a challenge. Just another job, but it's an exciting one. I'm glad I was on it. This one here. Removing the old mortar to expose the granite. Granite's extremely hard. In extremely good condition as well. Alex Skellen, a Scotsman. The amount of stone that's come out of that base of the lighthouse is unbelievable. Recruited from across the ocean to chip at the history of America. Man, it's two different worlds. We've got stuff back home that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old, you know. Castles, I've worked in many a castle back home. And you know, then it's over 50, 60 years old here is an antique, isn't it? You know? But uh, 
I guess that's America for you. But America's great, I mean, it's it's wide open, it's open to everything, you know. Yeah, I guess we've packed all our history into one little area, you know, whereas America's got it all spread out, you know. It's a beautiful lighthouse. Lovely lighthouse. That's impressive. It's going to be nice to be able to take these and take them up the other end and, you know, rebuild them again. It's going to be nice. Rebuilding with hammer and chisel and stone, the way it's always been. We're still back to the old basics, you know. It's the same way. But is it the same? I mean, it's two different worlds. Rebuilding and preserving for the future, for the past. Two worlds that have met at the edge of America. But it's tough stuff. Two worlds and one hard truth. <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, do y'all want to gather around? Skelly Hunt, the big man with the large coffee, leading a hungry pack. Where are the donuts? Where are the donuts? Time to fill in the holes. Any questions? And answer the press. Okay, so what's your biggest challenge at this point? No, no, but just keep on, keep on. And you only got 10 minutes in the hole, okay? Wow! God, man, this is big. <laughs> this is really big. Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest project I've ever done. And I'm like, man, that's a big thing. You gotta have complete trust in the engineers. Methods that, that are just expanded, that are you know, everything's bigger. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> we pushed up on this whole whole thing for three months now. But finally, when we got here, Friday, when we pushed up right here, we got a crack in this foundation. You got the lighthouse, you got the cross beams, you got the main beams, you got the travel beam, but we'll raise the whole business up a foot and crib it up. Jack it another foot, crib it, Another foot, jacket another foot, okay? You know, everybody knows exactly what we're going to do, but when it gets down to how we're going to do it, we're having to sort of wing it sometimes. If it was perilous, we wouldn't do it. I'm sure it's a lot harder to build than, than it is to move. All righty. This is the most reinforced footing you've ever seen in your life. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, what kind of bars? Number t what they call number 10 rebar. And I spelled it for you last week, remember? No. R-E-B. <laughs> Skelly Hunt, a big man with a big job. God, man, this is big. <laughs> Conquering this giant while facing this monster. Any other questions? Everybody ready to go? Yeah. No, no, no. Does anybody want to go? Raise your hand if you want to go. These guys are to You want to go? OK, we'll go. Hit them up. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I ride down the road and I see it from afar, wow, that is a monster. This is my dragon to kill. My mission was to document the move and the people that did it. The guys that did it got to slay this dragon. And then I, I don't worry anymore. You know, I had my dragon. <laughs> Mike Boer's dragon, a 10 million pound beast known to breathe fire. But now the dragon sleeps. Puff, the flame's gone out. And this is the last night that the light was on at its historical location. The next time it turns on, it'll be uh, 2,900 feet down the road. And then on top of that, I've got the light bulb. And the light bulb's in the white box over there but it was the last one to burn out when that light was sitting there. You know, it can't happen again. There's old Slim. Slim Lewis. The first cut, February the 13th. Mike Boer has recorded it all. This survives. He survives in a tiny two-room house, recording the lighthouse, the move, and the movers. 
the pictures will make it impossible to ignore the people that are doing it. At a place in history, we all came together at this lighthouse, and for a little bit of time, we kind of bonded, and we had one common goal, that was to move this lighthouse, keep it safe. That's part of history. If you want to record them, not photograph them, record them doing what they're doing, you have to be there. You, you have to be there all the time. So Mike has been there all the time, every day, from day one, from January 1, every day, without pay. I'm, I'm not getting paid by anybody. <laughs> I'm paying for the film and processing, too. Here we go. I'm having the time of my life. This is a hoot. You have to have something more than money to work for. You know, uh, I don't look at it as a hardship. My wife does. I, I actually am kind of ready to go home. I'd like to see my wife. But I won't give this one up. I'm going to see this one landed on the other end. I have to finish it. This is the lighthouse. This is the granddaddy of the lighthouses. The people who built this lighthouse were more than just craftsmen. I mean, there is some of them in it. I would love to find a group shot of these guys standing in front of this thing while it's being built and said, you know, what kind of men were they? What kind of people were they that, that built this thing the way they built it? But there is no group shot, no known photographs at all of those men. Craftsmen. There is only the masterpiece they left behind. That and a hard lesson about history. Capturing history before it slips away forever. In most photographers' lives, okay, you get that one chance. You have that one chance. And sometimes you take it and sometimes you don't. This is the one I wanted to do because this, this makes the history books. That's part of history. You know, the important thing is the work is recorded. These, these may not be the finest photographs ever photographed by the world's great photographers, but they are what happened. I've got to slay this dragon, and then I, won't, I don't worry anymore. home, safety, keeping you alive and floating. I care a lot for that lighthouse. Stood there boulder, sweating in the sun, felt like a million, felt like number one. The had a summer, never felt that strong, like a rock. Jamie Markley gently strums his six-string guitar, knowing full well that life is sometimes wired by a thread. Like a rock. It represents the island that I swam up and landed on when I was drowning. Drowning in the depths of addiction. It saved my life. It really did save my life. Work for peanuts, had a dime to spare, and I was lean. Saw it everywhere, like a rock. He was the second man hired. For Jamie, a second chance. It really kept me from going back to a very bad spot as far as having problems with drugs, major problems. I battled, I, I could say, it. I, I, was, I was snorting heroin for three years. Just by chance, I, I looked at the map, I saw Hatteras Island, and I made that turn with just $100 in my pocket. If I'd gone back up to Jersey, I'd probably have got back in trouble again. The lighthouse really was a beacon and saved me this time, I think. It drew me to a wonderful place. There's something about this, it's, it symbolizes strength. Like a rock. There's something to see like a rock. Well, it's big and it's beautiful. It's old and it's strong. It's just an historical building. I stood proud and I stood tall, high above it all, and I still believed in my dreams. 
I look back on a few of the things that happened and I'm just so lucky to have survived it and, and not gone to prison or, or worse yet and been killed. I know I've had a lot of acquaintances, some friends that, uh, that didn't make it through that period. I've always told people I'm, I'm the luckiest fellow I know. Still you know sometimes late at night when I'm bathing in the firelight moon comes calling ghostly white and I recall I recall like a rock standing on the street like a rock charged from the gates like a rock A rock, rock and roll, and a light that gives new meaning to the music. Your light makes me dizzy, your sunlight makes me clean, your light's just sweetest light made, as far as ever seen. Oh, no. A light that saved the life of Jamie Markley. <laughs> I'd like to report that all's going very well with the move. Soon, they're going to start real soon pushing it. And that lady's going to be just fine. Sweet Lou. Sweet cat. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet child. Yeah. You're coming for to carry me home. Those spiral stripes, black and white, like past and present. The light linking one with the other, joining the men who will move it with those who build it. The challenge it is, the challenge it was. They set out to build the greatest lighthouse, and Dexter Stetson was the man that was picked. Dexter Stetson. He came from Massachusetts. He was connected with the right families. He, he was trusted. He was first a shipbuilder, worked with wood, and Stetson used wood to support all those bricks. He thought back in, about his days in the, in the shipyard and, and obviously knew that if you had uh, wood and you kept it in fresh water, bathed in fresh water, it would remain forever in perfect condition. And when you got down four feet at Hatteras, you, you were into fresh water. So you hold those pine timbers down under the fresh water with, with piles of rocks, and that becomes your foundation. And you kind of look around and say, how in the world did this thing manage to stand that way? But it, it, it worked. And they were put there by a man who knew how to build ships, as well as lighthouses. The location of Hatteras, of course, it, it made it a difficult job. It, it was a logistical nightmare. OK, so you got 20 or 30 men here. Where are they going to eat? Where are you going to get your food? The island was isolated. There was almost nothing there. Some other things like weather would enter in there and, and malaria and men being sick. Bruce Roberts pecks at the past, chopping at the story of Dexter Stetson. I thought that you could go to a library and find and get all the answers. Anything as famous as a Hatter's Lighthouse, all I got to do is go get a book out there and it will tell me uh, all about the man who built the lighthouse. Every place I, I started to look, I hit blank walls. We don't know where Dexter Stetson came from. We don't know where he went to. Dexter Stetson. The Park Service knew that all of a sudden he appeared, built the lighthouse and left. That was about it, you know? And that's the only picture that we think exists of Dexter today. It's April 4th, 1869. I am getting along very well with the work considering the weather. The sounding rod, I managed to get down nine feet by battering the head so that I could get it no further. The foundation is about as good as I can make it. 
It is about the same all over, and I shall cover the whole surface with timber doubled. I remain your most obedient servant, signed Dexter Stetson, Superintendent of Construction, New Lighthouse for Cape Hatteras. I think it's pretty damn remarkable. I mean, the way he, he did the foundation uh, was unheard of, never been done before. I think that, that one of the things you see with Stetson is that he's not fighting nature but working with it. But what would Stetson say now? What would he think of moving his masterpiece? He was a very practical person. He said, you know, if you can move it and use it, do it. And, that, and it's going to save his building, too. I mean, I, I'm sure he'd be in favor of it. That building, that sentinel to the sea, built by a man history has forgotten. It stands as a memorial to Dexter Stetson, a monument to mankind. And I think that lighthouse is one of the most significant buildings in America. Some of the magic of the Hatteras Light is its location and its name. Hatteras has always meant a point of danger for, for sailors. You know, it sits there on the edge between safety and danger. It's a marker, uh, but it's, it's a marker in our lives. It's something that says everything's okay, and you care about it. And I hope that it always will be there. It's well worth the effort to save it. Sacred ground. To some, this is sacred ground. That monument is a memorial standing at the gate of a graveyard, the graveyard of the Atlantic. You know, there are families out here whose lives are deeply connected to that lighthouse. And they look around here and see all of these men and machines working. And to them, it's like desecrating their descendants, digging up ghosts from generations past, gouging the sacred ground, and stirring up the emotion of the island. These are the people who ask, how dare they? It's not the way it is. It's a damn shame. They're trying to rip at the soul of this island. It's the soul. It's the soul and the heart of Hatteras Island. Buddy McDaniel knows how to drive home a point. I mean, I wasn't born yesterday. I might be funny looking, but I sure as hell ain't stupid. <laughs> they don't see it the same way that we do. They don't feel it. They don't walk out there and have that emotional moment when they look at that thing. They don't feel it in here, you know? And I'm gonna tell you something else too. If they move that lighthouse and they drop it and it falls, I don't wanna hear the first park service person or the first engineer or any of them step up there and say that that was an act of God that made it fall. Because God ain't out there moving that lighthouse. A bunch of bureaucrats are. No, uh-uh. God is not out there moving that lighthouse. Excuse me. Buddy sees it from a different perspective. Shouts his feelings from the rooftops. And that's a shame. A lighthouse, cries Buddy, is not a mobile home. Why don't we just get out a game of Chinese checkers and every time somebody hops over you, you move it over here again, you know? I mean, that seems to me is kind of silly. And I look at today's generation and what they're raising up. Oh, man. That ought to be a doozy. You know, a bunch of bureaucrats tried to move it and this is what we're left with. You want to buy a brick? It's the move of the century. Yeah, you got that part of it right. It's definitely the move of the century. If it fell, it wouldn't bother me a bit. I just leave as soon as it falls, I have it, have it sitting to another location. Leon Jeanette, round here, the name is well known. That was my family's land, the Jeanette clan land. They sold it to the federal government to put the lighthouse on, erect it. It's got, it's got on the deed to erect the lighthouse. And that land, says Leon, is where the light is meant to be. And now they're moving it half a mile somewhere further over in the middle of the island. And as far as I'm concerned, it takes all the meaning away from it. Now that they're moving it, they want to charge people to claim it. It's always been free. And they've already said that in the future, you're going to have to pay to go up, up it. I don't think it's right. They never have charged money. 
the last day they had it there, I, I claimed it. You know, I'll never claim it again. The last day I claimed it, I cried. I've climbed it my last time, regardless of where they move it. I'll never go up it again. I always felt like the good Lord just took care of that old lighthouse because it's been through so many storms. And maybe I shouldn't say it, but I, I still would like for it to stay just where it is because uh, it, it won't be the same. It won't be the same at all. Because, see, we've lived with it all of our lives. It's been a part of us. And sometimes you can't help but feel a little distraught, you know? You talk about it not being the same. Well, this island will not have a lighthouse if, if we keep it where it is. That's what's been determined. An ocean here that is not going to care. It's going to take it out and you won't have any history to talk about. These waves just never seem to stop. I don't care what you put out in front of me, I'm still moving in, and I'll try to take you out. It's standing on a razor. You're either going to like what's being done or you won't. You know, we are on the edge of America right here. There is 120 feet of America in front of the lighthouse, and that's all it's got. If that were to leave, then you would have um, something that helps define America, erased, out of neglect. How about outfoxing nature? Using the technology of man, man still prevails. Four thousand. Yeah, we're starting to get separation right now. Keep it going. Tell me when you get to 99.45. Okay, you got it. You got it. Okay, you got it. The light's last pillar, the foundation's final piece. It's your party. You can cry if you want to. For the men, it is a milestone. Okay. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. That's a hoot. Cigars all around as those celebrating the birth of a child. Here's the teamwork, guys. Right. Now, the journey begins. Thumbs up. Teamwork. Where are This is history in the making. OSHA's happy. Painters happy. Pete's happy. My mama said she's happy. Did she? <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's the important thing. Keep mama happy. Well, it's certainly going to be a feeling of relief. We have done it. We're going to throw our hats in the air and shout hooray. I expect to get there without a without a murmur or a crack. It's very special, it really is. Good luck. And there ain't no more to say. Today's best music, Beach 104. All right, we're ready. The dawn of another dramatic day, the light's first lift. Now what we're going to do first off, we're going to build up the pressure. And when he tells you to shut them up, or close them off, you make sure you have every one closed off. This is absolutely critical. But when we shut off, we're shut off. Okay, open your number ones. The pressure at 44. Go to 44. It is a major moment. Everybody set at 44, one valve open. Zone two is ready when you are. The initial inch up. Everybody keep a close watch now. Up we go. All right, coming up. Okay, the lighthouse is up off the shoring. She's on our jacks. Up she goes. She's riding very steady, boys. Very good. Inch by inch. 
just like it's supposed to go. Beam me up, Scotty. You're looking good. There is excitement at the other end, too. The new site. Preparing the pad, it's where the light will sit. Tons of cement, a concrete slab held hard to the ground, and there, a beautiful beacon rising up from the earth. All right, watch your plates, coming up. All right, pressuring up. Pressure's up. Well, we're saving it. I mean, let's face it, if it stayed here many more years, it would have been in the ocean. You feel a real sense of accomplishment when you get where you're going with it. Stretching the tape an inch at a time. I got pressure now. One foot, then another. Up to the sky. The light. At last, it is lifted. Got it in control now. Did a lot of things that a lot of people didn't think we could do. The world's tallest brick lighthouse now stands even taller. From the mat beams to the base of the lighthouse is 10 feet in the air. She's looking good too. 100, 100 ton jacks. Bench presses the beam in the lighthouse up. It's holding the lighthouse just like this. 4,600 tons, just like that. You know, it, it is pretty incredible. Some people, you know, try live all their lives to try to make a mark on life. You could say we, we're trying to put an explanation point on what we're doing. To me, the light is the light. Whether you want it in the bottom of the ocean or whether you want it back for future generations to, to see it preserved. I mean, you know, Mother Nature is something you just cannot play with. We know we can't play with Mother Nature and we got to get this thing back there. With the light lifted, the move may at last begin. The main event awaits. Cape Hatteras, like Cape Canaveral, there it is, perched on the pad at the end of the earth, the inspiration of a nation contained in that capsule, a rocket ready to launch, fueled by the ingenuity of its crew, men reaching for the stars, doing what many thought could never be done. But if man can land on the moon, then surely he can conquer the light. It is only right. For here at this very edge, on these same outer banks, Man first touched the sky, learned to fly, and now he will once again alter the landscape of history. The light, the liftoff, pushing the outside of the envelope away from the edge of America. Uh, trying to dig a hole about, oh, about three, four feet deep, put up this sign so the lighthouse doesn't fall on anybody. Yeah, hurricane might take it away. It's an exciting morning here. We're live at Cape Hatteras, and uh, we're going to have all sorts of folks to talk to. It's not a theory anymore. It's, it's being executed. Yeah, they're really going to do it. Make sure they know we're rolling the tape from the truck. Look at the part that sure. came disconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we know that. Well, right now, it looks like that the move will happen about 3 o'clock this afternoon, but the weather this morning almost put a damper on those plans. Already there have been 1,800 visitors to the park this morning. That's about double what they usually see coming here this time of year. Today is the day. Are we moving today? It's, it's going to be moving. It's not moving yet. Are you going to be able to get that from this camera? Though? We're going to talk about the hydraulic jacks and all that stuff, and again, we're going to be able to show down. If they don't start here, though, I'm just going to have to add lib. Oh. Do we need that light? All right. That's when it's time. It will move when everything's ready. Like Bob is going to be on top of the lighthouse. I'll be underneath it. <laughs> That's how confident you are. That's how confident I am. 
You do not sound like a man who is worried at all. No, not at all. After years of planning, this is an exciting day. The day the light will move, a new path in its long history. Soon, it will slip into the future. This could be a, just a fantastic commercial for ivory soup. The time is now. Okay, Jerry, let's go. Mike, is everything on now? All right, you ready, my man? Hallelujah, let's go. All right, building to 1,000, Pete. Go ahead, give me three. Something's moving. Is it moving, Bobby? Hey, she's doing something. All right, she's pushing. You're rolling. Yeah, right. That's it. That was it. Yeah. It's really awesome. 9.6 million pounds of brick and concrete. Something else. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it! Can you see it? Wow! It's just going real, real slow. Oh, yeah, now I see it. Cool. And you're lucky to be here to see it. Someday you'll be able to bring your grandchildren down to see it where it's going to be and say, I remember when it was way up there at the beach. Oh my word. It's still going. It's still going, yep. Slowly but surely. Are the jacks fully extended? That's it. It is stop and go, five feet at a time. Push, reset, then push again. The first push is always the most exciting. After that, it's just part of the trip. We're coming, we're coming. Read about 2,200, Pete. Here we go again. Hey, keep her going. A mechanical ballet. For me, it's kind of like watching an old friend. Incredible. Barely tell she's going. That guy standing down there, he's still greasing the track as the darn thing's moving. I guess he's pretty confident in the way it's built, eh? Inching it along. Inch by inch. Mary Joy, the lighthouse is moving. Casey, can you see? Yeah. It's beyond me. <laughs> Coming again, here we go. Swing low, sweet chariot. You're coming for to carry me on. Swing low, sweet chariot. You're coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me on Cause a band of angels is coming after me Coming for to carry me on Slow it down some, Mike. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. We've got five inches to go. Four inches. Three inches. Two inches. Inch and a half. One inch. Hey, that's it, baby. Oh, right there. That's it. All right. Hey. Oh. Hey. All right. There is a time and place for everything, and maybe it was time to face fate. Stop staring down the sea except the reality of the ocean's wrath. Time to get out of the way. Time and place. There are those who will always say the light and its location are directly linked and to divide them is to destroy the very symbol being saved, place. The lighthouse is a landmark. Its place in history is at least secure. But what about the future? How long will the light last here? Here, at the end of a road, the end of an era, the beginning of a new life for the light, away from the edge of America. Okay, guys, thank you all. 2,900 feet, great job. They'll know you 100 years from now. Yellow! Okay, hard hats all. Hey, Mike! Where's that check? The house movers get something delivered, they're supposed to get a check. They're not supposed to wait.